New World's dropping another update on us, and this update is happening on April the 25th. That's when this video is going to be going live. So if you are watching this video now, these changes are already on the live servers. This is update 1.9.2, and along with this update comes some pretty interesting combat changes that I think you're going to want to be aware of. This is the fastest we've seen them roll out combat changes in a very long time. The balancing is happening as promised, so this could be good news for New World moving forward. But let's take a look at what these changes are. If we head on over to newworld.com, we check out the news section. We see here we have New World update 1.9.2. Along with this update, we are, of course, getting the Springtide Bloom event. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I have a bunch of videos out for this already. I'll make sure to link those down in the description below if you're interested in a full guide for the Springtide Bloom event or some of the patterns that are worth farming. I will link both of those videos down in the description below. They also made a couple of small changes with world experience with AI and then here are the big things with combat we're going to go through this section pretty quickly i'm going to give you my thoughts on some of this stuff they fixed an issue that caused the firestorm heart room material recipe to not correctly display in category name of stone cutting station updated the description for the perk nimble to be more clear about it increasing the regenerate nimble will not increase flat stamina gain from things like spears invigorated crits passive i guess there was some confusion there so now it shows that it is just an increase in regeneration rate they reduced the red color intensify of enemy spell abilities which this i am very interested to see how this works out this has been a problem for me i did not really enjoy this change as much as i thought i would i do like that we can tell the difference between enemies aoe's and friendlies but this change was a little bit too much so i'm not sure what the reduction in the intensity is going to look like but I'm very interested to see what this is going to be. And I'm glad they're at least addressing it because in my opinion, it was pretty bad. Then here are the interesting changes. We have armor, slightly increased armor mitigation for both medium and heavy armor. So medium armor is going to get 2.5% additional mitigation and heavy armor is now going to get an increased 5% mitigation. So now it looks like both medium and heavy armor are going to become a little bit more tanky. They also made some adjustments to fortify and some armor bonus adjustments. So they changed shirking fort yet again. They are increasing the max from 3.9 to 4.7, which will make shirking fort a little bit more potent. I'm not so sure what this is going to do to light armor. I don't know if this is going to make shirking fort a little bit more viable there or not, but they did increase the max from 3.9 to 4.7 percent so nonetheless shirking fort is getting a little bit of a buff sturdy fortification perk is also getting a buff they increase the max value from four to five percent and then they increase great axe fortifying whirlwind perk increase the value on armor from 6.6 percent .6 to 8.8 .8 and value on weapons from 10 to 14 percent that's pretty big so now you're going to be a little bit more tanky whenever you're using fortifying whirlwind and then here's some other interesting ones they are just increasing the amount of armor you get from these passives so Great Axe to Crowded Protection Passive, they're increasing that from 10 to 20%. So you're going to go from 10%. I think it gives Fortify or gives an armor increase, 10% to 20%. And then we have Warhammer, which is doing the same thing. The Outnumber Passive is increasing from 10% to 20%. And then we have Power Cleaner Upgrade. I believe this is the second upgrade for Clear Out. I could be wrong there. So if I am, make sure to correct me in the comments below. That'd be great. But I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And I think it just gives you Fortification as well. So it looks like they're just increasing the amount of armor you are going to get from these bruiser weapons. Then they have sword and shield defensive training passive. They are also increasing that one as well. Then we have the fire staff. This is where things become a little bit more interesting. Watch it burn. They temporarily disable the watch it burn passive from being able to trigger off the critical from the first to the meteor shower. It will be re-enabled when the larger fix is available. Then they have flare. Reduced damage from AOE from 140 to 110%. So we have a nerf going there for flare. And then they also remove the projectile slowdown. Then here's a big one as well. Pillar of fire. Reduced cooldown reduction value on armor from 17% to 11%. And the value on weapons from 30% to 20%. So I think they were doing this because Pillar of Fire could literally just be off of cooldown all the time whenever you were blasting this thing into clumps. So now that since they have reduced this, I don't think you're going to be able to do that anymore, which is a pretty massive nerf to Pillar of Fire. Then they have Musket Steady Aim. They're decreasing how long it takes to charge Steady Aim from 2 seconds to 1.5 and from one second to 0.75 seconds while in shooter stance. I don't know what they're going to do with Musket. It seems like this is just a problem child and will be for a very long time. I'm not sure how they're going to respond or how they're going to make musket viable in PVE at all or in PVP without it being incredibly annoying or OP in PVP and then make it usable. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with the musket. This thing has always been an issue since the beginning of the game, and I think it's just going to continue to be an issue. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with this moving forward. 
but nonetheless there's a few changes here they also increase response speed of accuracy markers are reticle when accuracy changes then we have a little bit of a change to the ice gauntlet in tomb they reduced in tomb's health from 75 percent of players max health to 50 percent of players max health so a little bit of a nerf there coming in for in tomb and then the void gauntlet they fixed an issue that caused the void blade to have tracking issues with targets this has been a problem for a really long time or at least i think it has been every time i've used the void blade i've had this issue so hopefully this fixes that problem and this could be a pretty massive buff to void blade if it does fix that issue and then we have another big one we have some bow changes coming in they added damage fall off all bow attacks damage fall off will start at 40 meters and reach 50 percent reduction at 100 meters then they also decrease the hitbox size of heavy attacks and ability projectiles from 0.33 to 0.275. In my opinion, I think these are pretty good changes. I know I might be stepping on toes for some of you bow users out there, but man, we have been in a ranged meta for so, so long, but I don't know how they're ever going to rein that in, to be honest, because bow is kind of a uh, more solo friendly play style whenever you queue into OPR. So I can understand why a lot of people play the weapon and it is, it is a fun weapon, but having the problem of ranged and melee and new world, it's just going to be an ongoing balance issue. I think it's just going to take them a long time to get this right. I don't think they'll ever get it perfect, but it's going to be an ongoing issue. The big takeaway from here is that they are at least making changes in a timely manner. These are not small combat changes either. Some of these are pretty big and they're addressing some of the problems that we see with the current meta. So that is really good. So now after these changes, hopefully we'll let them sit for a little while, see how the meta shakes out after these. And then I hope that we get consistent balance updates moving forward and not these long like six month droughts of nothing this is a great sign moving forward and i'm excited to see it there's also some other things in here economy progression and gear they're just adding some new season activities to replace some of the imbalanced ones so i think these are good you can down do more things if you haven't finished your season pass yet i finished mine already because i just i know life new world sometimes and i just grinded it out but for those of you who haven't finished it now you have some new season activities to do then the level 100 premium reward now correctly listed grants silver wing apparel set and then there's another few smaller fixes down here as well i will make sure to link these down in the description below or the full patch notes down in the description so you can check these out yourself if you want to there's a few ui ux and social things here and then a little audio fix as well so overall i think these are fantastic changes i for one am just incredibly happy that they are coming in and making balance changes so quickly i think these are really good i think they're heading in the right direction it's going to be incredibly hard for them to balance the ranged and the melee and, and and everything that goes on in new world it's just gonna be an ongoing battle but this is a promising sign for new world at least we're getting some kind of love to the combat on a timely basis but that's it that's what i wanted to bring you guys I want to make sure you're aware of some of these changes because i think the bow and the fire staff those are getting kind of hit hard uh so you might want to change up your build you might want to swap things up a little bit on this patch we'll see how this shakes out that's it just want to make sure i brought you guys this news that'll do it for this one thank you guys so much for watching i greatly appreciate it if you enjoy new world enjoy new world content please make sure to like and subscribe i would greatly appreciate that as well and of course stream every monday through friday eight o'clock a.m cst over twitch.tv slash bdlg play a lot of new world over there talk about all kinds of stuff life in general uh just have a good time love to see you over there too but that'll do it for this one boys and girls thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next one